And now our feature presentation. Welcome to the Glue in the Door. It's Thanksgiving Day and we're gathered round. Little children make a joyful sound. And there's no school and we get to play. And we're all thankful for this day. Except for the turkey. La 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 la. Except for the turkey. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. Gobble, 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 gobble. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 54 of The Grimmer Next Door. I'm your co-host Chris Green. Sitting next to me as always is the shh, you're too loud, Sarah. <laughs> it is. We're, uh, hello. We're uh, in our room today in our house because it is just too cold to go anywhere and everything echoes a lot louder. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try this for a, a change. We'll actually, you know, start recording because today was our very first snowstorm of the, the new season. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard to actually get out. I mean, it's not hard to get out, but we really want to you know, drive around when there's snow on the ground, snowing, and it just doesn't seem like it makes any sense to leave the house. So we'll just record here. So, okay. Well, this week we, um, we have a lot going on. Um, lot at work uh, we had a lot going on with the show um, it's been a great week I've actually been rejuvenated through the whole thing throughout the whole week I've been looking forward to coming back and doing another podcast um, sometimes one thing that a lot of people don't tell you when they do podcast is it is a little bit trying unless you actually record a bunch of episodes and you put it in the can and you put it in the cloud and you you know if you have a bad week you just take one out well you know, we do all of ours every Sunday, so we have nothing in reserve. So um, that probably is a big amateur fault by us, but, you know, we'll see. I, I like recording almost live to the week just so that we don't miss something. We don't have one of those moments where, oh, something major happened and we were already pre-recorded a couple weeks back. So um, we'll go into this week. Um, I'm rejuvenated. How about you? Uh, I am too. We really just came together this week and got so much accomplished. And we have so much that is, uh, that's going to happen in yeah. the next few months. I mean, it's going to be pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it throughout the year. We have so many new things that are coming around, whether it's, you know, for us personally or it's, you know, progress with us at work. There's so much that's going on that, you know, we don't want to disclose anything. We want you guys to all be as surprised as we are. Um, now, this week you went to the Pical meeting on Wednesday or was it? It was Thursday, actually. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember either. <laughs> I think it was Thursday. I yeah. think it was. Yeah. Um, went there and uh, unfortunately I was late. I, I hate being late to things. Hate it, hate it, hate it. But with work being so insane, we got off of work like 10 to 6, and the meeting started at 6. Yeah, we were out pretty much almost half the week, more than half the week. I think it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We were out right about 6 o'clock. I mean, it's, and then of course, the other two days were out, you know, just after 5 o'clock. So 5.15, 5.30-ish. So there really isn't much of this play of, you know, well, we're, if we're out at 5 o'clock, that's great. We don't actually have those kind of hours because of all the dogs that come in. And was it me, or did we have just a large amount of big dogs this week? Uh, uh, normally, when it starts getting cold like this, big dogs don't tend to come in to get groomed. Um, most folks have the sense to make sure not to shave down their dog uh, this close to winter. But they do want to make sure that the dogs are brushed out, which is super important, is that you get your dog into the groomer more now than ever so that it doesn't come January, February, your dog is matted to the skin and is hurting because of the mats. So you want to get them in soon and keep them brushed out, keep them going. And it just seemed like all the large dogs fell <laughs> in the last couple weeks, and we still have more to come. I know we have an Airedale and Aussie coming up on Thanksgiving week. And then um, we have, <laughs> I want to try to get Tiger Jane and Duncan in, which Tiger Jane is a, what well, I would see to be a maybe um, a long-haired German Shepherd mixed with an Australian Shepherd. 
That was like a Beano the other day. Beno? Ben- I see. <laughs> I know it's spelled yeah. Beano, but it's yeah, pronounced it's, it's, Beno. It's so hard for me to actually. Every time I see it, oh, he's, he was He's so just a long haired German Shepherd, but you add an Australian Shepherd to the mix and you get Tiger Jane. And sweetest dogs ever, sweetest owner in the world. Oh my goodness! But I kind of feel like that to all of our customers. Well, I do too. I mean, and I was, you know, one of the rejuvenating moments this week was Wednesday, um, when we had Zega come in. I, I don't know. There, here you just have this big bear of a dog, but that takes hour and a half to work on just on the bath and dry. But man, every time I have her come in, it just, it it, it changes everything for me. I, I tend to look at things different. I tend to be happier. Um, I mean, this whole week though has been uplifting. I've had a lot of a lot of moments this week that have actually made me happy. Well, with Zega being as big as she is and being the you know one hundred and thirty pound Newfoundland, um, she actually lost weight. She she pushed one hundred and sixty at one point, but now she's down to one hundred and thirty. Yeah, she does seem like she was easier to get in the tub because she can't. She has pretty poor hips, so you have to yeah. kind of pick her up and bring you know give her her own way in. <laughs> Team <didn't>, lift. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like it was that much effort to get her in this time. Yeah, so. it wasn't terrible, but um, working with such a large dog, it's like working on a teddy bear that gives you kisses in between. Yes, big, and, big teddy bear with big yeah. cum. So, I mean, it was awesome. The new slicker brush that I got, I do recommend... Um, I wanted to talk to people about this, too. I'm sorry to kind of segue I into this real quick. Since didn't even know about anything about it, so go on. <laughs> we're not ta- we're, we didn't talk about this off air. <laughs> Um, the slicker brush that we bought off of um, Amazon, they're $15 a piece, and I guess it's comparison to another brand that's more expensive, but it's, um, it's a slicker brush. One side has bent bristles, and the other side has more straight bristles going upwards, angled upwards, and it's split in the middle so it moves and contours to the body. Um... And as you're brushing, it moves and definitely gets down deep. And then you can flip it over to the other angle brush that's angled straight up and gives it more of the fluff effect. Um, when <coughs> doing Zega this time, this brush, I kid you not, shaved off a half an hour off my time. And we've used it on Katana. I mean, oh my gosh, <laughs> the difference that Katana looks. I mean... She's blowing her, her summer coat, and you just worked her, and it was so, so nice. You know, with any kind of slicker brush, you don't want to get down straight to the skin because you're going to brush burn your dog. Um, you want to make sure you get the longer hair and get as much as possible fluffed up. But then what most people forget, you need to use a comb. The comb gets down to the skin, and as you're brushing through with the comb and it stops, reveals a knot, pick it apart with your fingers. Um, so you, the slicker brush is not meant to be used pressed very hard to the skin. Um, even the soft slicker brushes that have softer bristles, meaning that they're not so s- straight up and down, or they're not, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> they're not placed in tight. You know, they they're kind of, Yeah, they're flexible. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing moves a little bit better. Um, I use a softer slicker brushes for, you know, little dogs, but dogs like Zega, man, this brush was amazing. I got Chris one too. And, um, the bigger they are, the fluffier they are, the better these work. Um, but shaved off half an hour time and she always comes in matted. Um, the owners never want to really cut. So there's times where I have to spot shave. Um, but all in all, she's a long coated Newfoundland and, um, some noose that come in, all they do is get shaved. Not Zega. And what's been nice is that our big dogs that have come <coughs> in Excuse haven't me. needed to be shaved. Um, we've been educating our customers a lot more lately, um, especially from last winter to this winter. Um, the dogs that came in last winter, we educated them, saying, you know, you really need to bring them in at least a couple times during the winter just so we can fluff them up and get those knots out so that when summertime comes around you don't have a nasty mess you have a dog that's been happy all through winter and we even down in springtime we had very little messy dogs i mean you're gonna get a couple of them and that's understandable but we didn't even really have that well they all came in in the winter all messed up and i don't know what happened but i finally was able to educate them they're like oh i didn't know this 
no one told me this. Well, now there you know. You yeah, and no one's off the battle. Yep. If you if you don't know G.I. Joe, that was a G.I. Joe reference. Um, all right. Well, I mean, I love the brush. It was a, It is an outstanding brush. Just don't use it on small, short hair dogs. Yeah, <laughs> or thin hair dogs. Yeah. You know, you got to really look at the at your pet and talk to your groomer. Um, you can send me a picture if you want, and I can basically tell you what kind of brush you should use. Um, yeah, if, you, if anybody has any questions on this brush, what brush it is, or has any questions on what brush that they should use at home, just send us an email to the groomer next door at yahoo.com. We'll respond back and give you the product of what, you know, we're recommending. And, of course, we don't have any sponsors that we're going to give you, you know, only what they want us to give you. We're going to give you the truth of what we use. Exactly. I'm, I will not recommend anything to anybody mm-hmm. without trying it out myself. Um, there's been a number of things that I've done. I tested on my dogs or I tested on myself. Uh, colognes, for one, for dog c- colognes. I have super sensitive skin. And I test the cologne out on my skin first. And if I start itching or breaking out, I will not use it on the dog. So we just bought this awesome dog cologne. It smells fantastic. My other groomer groomer friend, Christina, uh, she hated it. She <laughs> bought it too. And she's out in California. And she goes, oh, I hate it. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It smells like an old lady. And I'll, 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 I'll go with that. I mean, it was it is a weird smell. I've never really been a big fan of dog colognes, but there are a lot of people who are. Yeah. I think that if you give a good bath, then the dog should smell good automatically. I mean, I think a lot of groomers, and this is just personal experience or personal opinion here, I think a lot of groomers spray that on dogs because they're trying to hide inadequate dog uh, baths. Yeah, I would really be careful and watch (laughs) if your dog comes home smelling heavily of cologne. Yeah. Um, Especially if you didn't ask for it. I, I know some people who have done that, and I did report them. Uh, it's not right. Even yeah, this yeah, one well, guy. You might, you might as well just say, I just sprayed some water on the dog. I didn't do a well, thorough bath. That's what he did. Yeah. That's what he did. He he looked at the dog, said, oh, the dog looks clean enough. It was a yellow lab. It feels clean enough. And he sprayed some cologne on, trimmed the nails, cleaned the ears, and charged him $25. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> I reported that. that. That's not right. You're, you're ripping the customer something fierce. So, um, I tested the cologne on myself. Didn't have any issues. Um, I let the owner smell the cologne first. Because what might be my cup of tea is not their cup of tea. And, um, people seem to really like it. And I don't... I like to put the cologne on the bandana. And not on the dog itself. Just in case, you know, obviously dog's skin is a lot more sensitive than humans. Even though mine's super sensitive so um by spraying <coughs> on the bandana then it's not touching skin and when they're ready to take it off they take it off and they still smell like it but it's a lot less versus just straight spraying straight on yeah i mean i i, I know we've had a lot of people say i love this stuff i i'm you know it to each zone i mean that that's how it goes that's why i typically ask i'm like do you want something that smells like a cologne do you want a clean scent? Do you want an apple scent? Um, there is another horrible, horrible berry scent that I threw out. <laughs> Sorry, Craig, but I threw it out. It stunk to high heaven. But um, So they tell me which one they like, and eventually I get more. Just like our nail polish just exploded out of nowhere. Also, we have all this nail polish. Yeah, oh my gosh. Of a customer. That was so sweet of her. We have like... I, I kid you not, like, it, it seems like 80 different colors. We have so many colors, there's not even a rainbow that could have that many colors. It is just crazy. We have six shades of pink. And we have different kinds with sparkles in it, and oh my gosh, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's crazy. And all courtesy of mm-hmm. our customer, so yes. she, needless to say, has free uh, nail polish for life on her dog. <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny because I did this with um, our little Chihuahua Belle. I had painted her nails with a nice little red uh, nail polish, when, which she's due to a new... Ruby new Red Slipper. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. it's by China Glaze. I liked it. I thought it was so cute. It, it fit her pro, her profile perfect. Um, yeah, so it, it there's just been one thing after another after another. Um, we actually had um, one person come in, and, it, you know, again, all week it just seems like people have been kind of 
given us this this highlight praise and pat on the back. Um, so it's been really nice. And this week we had one of the police officers come in, and he knows of the show because his CEO, commanding officer, um, actually was Officer Gray, or is Officer Gray. So his CEO is Officer Gray, and he heard about the show. He's seen the uh, Rolla TV, or Rolla PD TV um, segment that we're on, which actually was the very first Rolla PD TV episode ever filmed. I don't know if you know that. I did not know that. I thought there was a couple more in the can for that. No, nope, no. Nope. We were the first video, I think, ever shot. And we weren't aired oh. for, I think, four episodes prior. So, oh. Officer Nakanishi, just awesome. I mean, I just, he's always yeah, so that, that um that officer came in and he went to pick up his girlfriend's dog. Um, and just, I really enjoyed that podcast. I really enjoyed that episode. And um, I know Officer Gray did, too. Like, well, that's great. I got his mom in here that brings in Hank and Bam and... I get to see Officer Gray's son every once in a while. It's it's really cool. It, the more you have FaceTime with the customers, and the more that you come in as a customer and have FaceTime with your groomer, you get to know each other on that one-on-one -on -one basis, which you really should. Like you should really have just talk to your groomer and become, you know, social friends, not. Not, Business acquaintances, yeah. you know, something a little bit better than an acquaintance. Professional. But yeah, professional. Yeah. yeah, there you go. You know, that I got a couple of my customers on my Facebook. Um, it's just easier for them to send me a message. Sarah, I need a groom for my two standards. Oh, okay. I, I could tell you how many times your phone will just bleep and it'll be a Facebook message. Hey, I need this. I need that. Okay, sure. Well, let me it's work so in. so much easier. It is. Instead of just picking up the phone, hearing it ring. Picking it up. I don't make any. I make. People. I make. I make phone calls a lot now. A lot more now than I ever did. Normally, I would just call my family back in California, and now is the only time I use my phone. Now it's it's a little bit different, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about a little bit later. But <clears throat> it's it's just one of those things. Most people don't use a phone. I mean, I, I heard a statistic this week that people are using smartphones only for going on the on web, checking emails, checking Facebook, checking any kind of social media. Watching TV or movies, but the li the list for making phone calls is just down to like the small under ten percent. It yeah. is crazy how little we use the cell phone now. Well, I I was allotted uh, five hundred minutes in our plan. Yeah, and I barely broke a hundred. Barely in 30, 30 days broke a hundred minutes, and my text messages were about six thousand. And I think they were higher than that because we. I, think I remember. So. I think I lowballed that. Yeah, you did because I remember a few years ago, quite before we even moved out here, you and I were competing on how our, our how many text messages we had sent, and we were at six seven thousand back then, and that was each. Now I'm imagining it's got to be more than that. So I would ask your groomer if if your life seems to be so busy and hectic, ask your groomer if they do provide any of that. Uh. I don't care for emails. Emails, the dead. It's a dead. Uh, it reminds me of snail mail. You know, yeah. I'll use email if you need to, especially for the um, some of our older customers that don't like to text or don't understand their phones. Um, I'll definitely more than happy to write an email, um, Facebook message. See if they can do that, um, and you gotta make sure they check it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to check it, um, but see if you can just text the groomer. Uh, it's just so much easier. <laughs> well, let's move on because we're almost at twenty minutes on this. Oh um, yeah. Um, so well, we got a couple tidbits of their information. We, that did. we did, yeah. and and you know, I like I said this week, I have been just dying to get back behind the mic and do this. Um, like I said, it's been a great week. So you just want to you want to tell all of you guys about it and just just thank everybody who was involved this week for everything that that. Made this week so wonderful. So, um, as I've always mentioned, throughout the week, there's a lot going on for the show. Um, most of the time, we don't talk about it because there's just no point in talking about something that could be or that might be. Um, so, I've been trying to get, as all of you know, I'm always trying to get you guys interesting people to listen to. Hear their story, hear about unique places, um, 
we will have one coming up from Oahu. Um, I just got to find time to be able to meet with them by phone. In a few minutes, you'll be hearing John Wrench, John Redshaw. Sorry, I could not talk for a second there. You'll be hearing him. Him, him and I did a, an interview this week. Um, but I was calling around. One of the people that I, one of the environments I want to share with you guys are acting animals. Now, what that means is animals that are on camera, in shows, um, TV, movie, etc. So. I don't have anything entirely yet, but I do have a very funny story. Um, I called one person out in Los Angeles, and if any of you have ever seen the movie Due Date, I don't know if you have, it's a hilarious movie, um, it has Robert Downey Jr., and I can never say his other names, <laughs> but he's from The Hanover. Great movie, absolutely hysterical. Um, so. I was talking to the lady and she was saying, oh, well, we were actually the ones that had the dog that was in that movie. I was a French bulldog. Yep. And I was just like, really? So she says, yes. Um, we were in pre-production, which is pretty much the producer, director. They're talking. They're kind of storyboarding while, you know, they're trying to get everything shot list, all this stuff with the trainers. Everything is in, a, in one room. They're just kind of, you know, figuring out what they want to do. So she says, yes, we had, we were there. This was one of our trainers, one of our dogs. Um, well, the dog does something <laughs> in the movie. Would you like to explain? Um, he um, ends up, when he's bored, he self-pleasures himself. So they're in the meeting, the producer's talking, and he sees the dog doing this and says, did I just see what I think I saw? And right away, the trainer had stopped the dog from doing it. And they're like, no, 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 that, that didn't happen. So they carry on talking about, you know, how they want to shoot this movie. And the dog, again, a few minutes later, gets bored and does it again. Well, the producer now sees it and goes, no, I know I see this. I know I'm seeing this. So, of course, the whole thing is the trainer didn't want to actually have this dog do this on camera. But, you know... It happened. So everybody has a dog that does something. They're like, quit it. Yeah. You know, stop it. Whether you it's, know, it's licking themselves yeah. or or stop, stop it. Or scooting their butt on the floor. <laughs> so there's always something that a dog's gonna do. Um, so what they were they were they didn't want to do this because of course you would have to train a camera on the dog. You don't know how long it's gonna take for the dog to get bored. That was one of their biggest concerns. So they said, okay, well, we'll do it. So what happened was they actually put that in the movie. It was not written in the movie originally. And as they're filming the movie, they're actually in the car filming. Now, what happens if you don't know production, there's a trailer with cameras hitched to another car. You don't know that the car is actually being pulled. Both actors are in the front seat of the car. The dog's in the back seat. The trainer is laying on the floorboard in the back seat, so he's at a camera angle. And the entire time they're in the car, the dog is farting. Just kept farting and farting and farting. So as you're watching the movie, if you ever do see this movie or you've ever seen it, just imagine in that car, it smells of dog fart. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you. I asked her if she would actually uh, be part of it. She would you know, tell the story, but she was so busy. I mean, I would be able to talk to her and she's like, hold on, I got a call committed. They're one of the top people that actually send out animals for production. So I like to hear these little stories. And, you know, it's kind of nice throughout the week. I actually hear a lot of stories. I don't share them a lot on air because it's kind of, you know, it, it, it's from me. I feel like, you know, I'd love you to hear from the actual people who are there. Um, so we're, we're still working on getting them, but they are busy, and it's hard to get a trainer who's not on set to actually be willing to go on, on air and do even a small 15-minute window. They're they're busy. So I wanted to share that with you guys. That's why it's on the album art this week. I, I thought that was a hysterical story. So if any of you are curious about what I'm talking about, go out. You can go to Walmart, five bucks, and you can get the movie and own it. It's worth it.
It's definitely worth it. I when Chris told me that story, I was like, no. Yeah, well, no, I thought I thought the dog was CGI. No. I thought that they made it look like that through the magic of Hollywood. I didn't think the dog physically could do that, but he can. So. How can anyone keep a straight face when they're doing that and then just drive around in circles until the dog got bored? Well, it, you could just uh, keep the dog in the car. Just let the dog sit there in the car. How the, the trainer will be laying on the floorboard. Could be sitting there, laying there for five minutes. Could be laying there for an hour. And you have a camera trained on him. Which is nice. Is Nowadays, you don't actually have actual tape. Everything's digital. So it doesn't cost as much as it used to cost to film. That's one thing that, that has been nice when you come to filming. Same thing applies to doing this. We don't have any tape. Everything's all digital. So I wanted to share that story with you guys. I thought it was hysterical. Um, another person I talked to, I won't go into full detail. Um, they wanted to say hi. They wanted me to say hi for everybody. They're up in Seattle, Washington. They said, um, say hi to everybody. Won't go into detail of that story. In Missouri. Say hello to everyone in Missouri. Say hi to everybody in Missouri. Say hi to everybody. Um, great person to talk to. They had nothing to do with this type of uh, of anything, anything animal. It's just another another thing that we're looking to branch out into. Um, so yeah, well, I think it's about time to welcome back to our show, Mr. John Redshaw. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. He, even though we have spoken to him a few times, I myself once. And you two other times. Um, this will be the third for you, right? Oh, gosh. Is it third or fourth? I mean, it's a, this well, it's the actually third? the fourth. It is the fourth because we did a video at the location. We did okay. a video, and I think we actually tagged it into a podcast. But we you know, we keep going back there, and you keep talking to him, and it, new things keep popping up. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff I didn't know beforehand, or um, different things that he's gone through that just popped up. Quite nice to be this um, connected yes. to somebody, and and you know he's a great friend. He's a great person to be able to work next to. Um, I'm honored to be able to talk to him every time that we do this. This time we did it a little bit different. You know, like I said, I do a lot of work in between picking up our daughter. So I was actually you'll hear a little bit of a difference because we actually did it by phone, op- opposed to actually being at the actual shelter. We could not get down there, set things up. He was busy that day because they were discussing the plans for the future for the new uh, animal shelter. Unfortunately, it was a couple hours before he could actually disclose anything because he didn't know anything himself. But I want you guys to sit back and enjoy because this was a great episode or great interview. And, you know, thank you, John. Thank you for always being, you know, available to come on the show. I love having you here and look forward to doing more with you as soon as possible. So sit back, folks, and enjoy. Hello, you call the Green Nectar Hotline. All right, I am sitting here um, by phone, actually, for the very first time. We've never done this before. And welcome back to our show, John Redshaw with the Rolla Animal Shelter. Welcome back. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I'm proud to be back here. We've had a busy, busy last couple of months. Boy, tell me about it. Oh, man. We actually had planned to sit down and do this before. We had planned to actually get together for a video. Unfortunately, we have been swamped. Both of us, actually. It's not just one of us. We both have just been going crazy on this. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, usually this time of year, we're kind of looking forward to settling down a little bit and getting not so busy and not so many animals in here. But I'm telling you what, this year is, is a different story altogether. We are we are busting at the seams here with dogs and cats. Um, we're, we're pretty much at our limits, and we're actually, believe it or not, we have to turn people away that, that want to bring in dogs and cats because we simply don't have room. We're actually taking in more than we're actually moving out. Oh, and no. I don't, I don't understand the reasonings behind that. Like I said, you, we're usually looking forward to November, December, the winter months when we go out there. And we have like three or four dogs to clean and maybe two or three cats, but not this year, not yet. Hopefully, we'll have a pretty good weekend in the next couple of weeks. But right now, it's just terrible. So, what is your number on cats? How many cats do you have currently as residents? 
Well, right now, as far as cats are concerned, uh, see, we got the uh, our, our our babies come up for adoption. The ones that just turned nine weeks old, uh, they were ready. And this last weekend, we actually adopted two of them. So we have six babies left. Wow! And and the moms in there. So we're really trying to find good homes for those. And then the others, I want to say, gee whiz, we probably have. Oh, seven, eight cats, nine cats in there ready to go, and they're all vaccinated. Uh, they're just wonderful, wonderful cats. We'd sure love to get them a good home. Boy, and how many dogs do you have now? Oh, gee whiz, dogs. Well, uh, for those of you that's been to our kennels, we have an inside kennel room. We have a front side, a back side, and a side side. <laughs> no, for lack of a better word. Um, our inside is totally full. That's that's the only area that we have that's actually heated and stuff. Uh, our front side is completely, totally full. Our back side is completely full. And we've got four cages left on our side kennels. Uh, so we are, and we don't like to fill up all those kennels for different reasons. We never know when an emergency is going to hit. Uh, somebody might be in an accident or have a medical emergency type thing. We're going to have to take in unexpectedly. And also, in addition to that, uh, whenever we go home at 5 o'clock and on weekends when we're not here in holidays, the Royal Police Department, the officers have to pick up animals, and they actually do our job and pick up animals and bring them in here. So we have to always leave cages open and available for them. Wow, and, and you just had a holiday, Veterans Day yesterday, so you guys were unavailable to be there. Right. And of course, now we have the winter season, which over here in Missouri, we are feeling it. Um, are you seeing a lot of uh, calls come out for people leaving dogs out? Actually, we have not yet. Good. Uh, we just started getting into the cold weather, but fear not. It will arrive as soon, better, faster than you, than you expect it. Uh, we're going to start seeing animals and calls with uh, uh, dogs with no shelter, especially, you know, they're talking about like snow this weekend. Yes. So we're going to start getting some calls of animals out there with no shelter, no food and water. I mean, cold and you know how it goes. But no, right now we have not. Wow. Now, since we're on the topic of shelter, what does the Royal Animal Shelter recommend for any dogs that are outside during the winter seasons? Good question. If, uh, and there's a lot of dogs out there that are outside pets. Uh, when the weather starts getting cold like it already has, I guess it's supposed to be like 19 or low teens tonight. And I understand for the next oh, 10 to 14 days, we're supposed to have highs in the, in the 30s. Mm -hmm. um, we might have some sunshine, but it's still going to be cold. But the outside pets, we would love to have them have a an enclosed dog house. I mean, we're not looking for the tarp spread between the trees and things like that. We're looking for actual bona fide uh, uh, legitimate dog houses, whether they're the higher dollar, higher end igloo dog houses or maybe dog houses made out of whatever your, whatever your fancy is. You know, just as long as they have something to get in out of the rain, the ice, the snow, the wind. Uh, when they do have a dog house, something to get into, we don't recommend putting hay in there. A lot of people go, hey, I'll stick some hay in there. Hay is not a good conductor of heat. Straw is. Straw will actually dry out a lot faster because, of course, we all know it's hollow, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to dry out a lot faster and a lot quicker. Of course, you're going to have to change the straw out periodically when it does get soiled with mud and water and stuff like that because your straw is actually going to, it's going to, when it gets wet, it's going to rot, mm -hmm. you know. So we need to change that out. As far as blankets are concerned, blankets are good as a temporary thing. Uh, we don't recommend sticking blankets in there because blankets, when they get wet, they get dirty, and the weather gets colder, the temperatures drop, they're going to actually freeze. And there is no heat in a frozen, wet, cold blanket. <laughs> so, we, we, yeah, we kind of want to stay away from, from that. Um, face, it, face the opening to the south also. Uh, a lot of people, they're doing good, their hearts are in the right place, they're they're, they have the doghouse, they have everything, but they have the opening facing towards the north, which is probably not a good idea. Turn it around so the opening faces the south. That way when the sun comes out, you know, they're going to get some of that warmth through the sunshine. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as your water bowls are concerned, that is one thing that we totally and completely understand. Uh, we get a lot of phone calls during the cold weather that, hey, so-and-so, they've got this water bowl out there. 
and it's frozen solid and the dog can't get any water. You know, we're in the same situation. Even though we have plastic all the way around our kennels now like we have in the previous years, our water bowls still get frozen. So if you fill them up, give them cold water, fresh water in the morning. I mean, if you can possibly take a lunch break, a lot of people can. We understand that. You know, if you can take a lunch break, come home, break the water, give them some fresh water. It's going to last, you know, a little while longer. And then do it again in the evening. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, get a, uh, a heated water bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people do that. It's, we don't really recommend putting it inside the dog house. Um, when they do that, they'll step on it and get wet, and they got to lay in it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people also, what they do is they build a little a little foundation or a little, little cover for their, their dog water bowl. You know, and... and huh? No, I, I'm agreeing it, with you. Right, you know, something to keep out of the wind. And what I seen here not too long ago in town when I went on a call is somebody had like a a, a block built out of like two by sixes where the dog can get in there, or well, the dog can't get in there, but their water bucket was actually in there. And what they did, they strung a light bulb inside high enough where the dog is not going to get burned and there's no chance of it getting wet. But it's kind of like a an inflared type uh, uh light in there so it, it will enable the water to keep warm and not freeze that's so that, like i said that's going let's go the extra mile there. there's a lot of people that do that i mean myself i've got a heated water bowl for my chickens i've also got heat and air conditioning for my chickens. so you know chickens but, are but, a breed of their own though i mean they're outside in the cold and they just don't seem to be bothered now no they don't but, I, i've never understood that it's it is quite entertaining we are over at Shadow with our owners of the, the shop, they actually have chickens. And you just look at them, and they're just happy. Like, oh, it, it's nothing to sure. them. No, it's <laughs> not. They got so many feathers on them, you know, they're, they're good to go. But, no, chickens aren't, aren't acceptable to that, but I still, you know, I do the, do the thing. But if you have, like I said, outside pets, you might want to just think about this. I mean, don't stick them out there on a chain with no doghouse or nothing, and you're getting, you're getting ice, and you're getting rain, you're getting snow. That's probably not a good idea for the dog or the owner when we get a hold of them. You know, that, that can be construed as animal neglect, animal cruelty type thing. So we don't want to go, we don't want to go that direction. So, you know, spend a little bit of time, think about your animals. Hey, it's getting cold outside. I've got to do something. If you, if you don't have that stuff, and you have like a basement or maybe a garage or something. Uh, I've also seen sheds out there that people put animals in. They have it. They have a little heater, or a little light bulb stuck way up there where the dogs won't get cold, or, or the, the, it'll keep the dogs warm. You know, anything that you can do to make sure that your dog, your outside pet, is not stuck out there in the cold and the rain and the ice and stuff. Very Help true. them out because they're going to get cold. Yeah. And and with these types of weather's coming, the weather coming through, we are all going to be cold. So they're definitely even, and especially the short hair. Oh, I feel so oh. bad for short hair dogs. Man, that's terrible. That, that's just the worst of it all. Yeah. So yeah. What else is going on in the world of the Rolla Animal Shelter? Oh, we are definitely keeping busy. We are getting our fair share of of animals running loose. We've had an increase in animals being, you know, this is the thing we had, a problem we had here a few weeks ago. When when the shelter gets full, we can't can't take in additional animals. We have to turn people away. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that should be an understandable uh, issue. I mean, it's, I know it's bad for the people. They go out and their, their heart's in the right place. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to bring animals into the shelter, but if we don't have the space to put them, we have to send them back home. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that will simply dump the animals off. Mm-hmm. And their way of thinking is, hey, I, you know, if I just dump it off in town, then animal control has to come and pick it up anyway, and they're going to take it in. Well, there's, there's a good side of that. Yeah, we will pick up the animals but the bad side of that is somehow we have to make room you know and if we're full of if we've got if we're full of dogs our kennels are are full we can't simply take in more we have to make room somehow and that's what people don't understand and you know the other thing um, that I've noticed is you have dogs wandering um, they'll be wandering around a highway two-lane highway it's nighttime they can get hit by a car they can be ate by coyotes there's sure. so many different things that can happen. So dumping a dog, it, it doesn't have the, oh, well, animal control will pick them up. That's their problem, not ours. Those dogs are left on their own. They will be starved. 
they are prey it's just there's just so many different things that could go wrong there and i have never been able to understand the mentality sure you know there's there's more negatives than there is positives you know they're going to survive however way however they can survive and if it's if it's getting into uh, somebody else's yard and maybe fighting with their animal in order to get a decent meal and that's what they're going to do you know it's just it's a problem it's a it's a big big problem when when people dump animals inside the city and in the it's the county also it's not only the city that has the problem it's the county that has the problem and nine times out of ten, the county citizens will will want to bring their animals into the shelter also. And you can't do a whole lot with 24 cages. That's true. You know, and, you know or, or, or 16 cat cages. Cats are the same way. They'll simply just dump them off. So we try. We, we, we try everything we can to accommodate everybody. But unfortunately, the problem is that we don't have enough space to take in each and every animal that we find. And it's going to be, it's, the outcome is going to be bad for the animals that are left out there. And that's the sad part. And then all you can do is keep trying to spread the message out there, unfortunately. You know, I've, I say it all the time on this show, we're not talking about Paris Hilton and we're not talking about celebrity gossip. So it's not as entertaining to most. Right, it isn't. You know, another thing that would help us, Chris, is that we can't stress enough the importance of having some sort of identification tag on your dog. Now, we've brought a lot of dogs in over the years and recently that are still having that problem. The dogs come in, they have no tag. So if, if they don't have any tag, the only thing we can do is post them on our Facebook page. And now not every single person out there is going to log on to Facebook and go, hey, there's my dog. There's a lot of people that don't do Facebook or things like that, so they don't know that their dog is actually here or wherever. Now, we, we actually did an interview um, a couple months ago with a great organization right here in Missouri. Uh, it's called Missouri Lost and Found. Right. Um, post, and they post tons of pictures online. I mean, it's everywhere from Phelps County to St. Louis to Jefferson City to Springfield. It's all over the place. But again, you know, these dogs are dumped. And how many of them are going to be claimed, oh, that's my dog? That's right. the biggest problem. It is. It is. And I know you guys are face that. You face that every day, every single day. And we do our best. That is our job to get these animals back to their rightful owner. But we cannot do that if we have no identification, no means of knowing who the actual owner is or where they are. We just hope that they I, they see their dog somewhere on Missouri Lost and Found. If it's picked up, if it's here at the shelter or on our Facebook page, you know we can only hope. Our goal is to send each and every one of these dogs to a home, whether it's claimed by the owner or adopted out. But, you know, that, that's not working in our favor and hasn't been for the last couple of weeks. And, of course, it's getting cold outside. The weather's coming. People are, are thinking about holidays. They don't, they don't have time for animals. And, you know, it's just it, it's, it's bad for the dogs that we have here. We'd like to move more than what we have been, but, you know, we, we can't do that. And that's that's the hard part. Now, when you mentioned the holidays, do you actually see an incline of people coming in to adopt pets for gifts for kids? We do, we do, and that has been also a problem in the past. It's you know puppies for Christmas. Everybody wants puppies and smaller. They're not interested in the big dogs, the adult dogs, the older dogs. They're interested in the younger dogs and the puppies, as well as the kittens and the younger cats. They're looking for Christmas gifts for their friends, for their family, for their children, for grandma and grandpa, mom and dad. And the thought is there. It's great. It's wonderful. But it's not, it's not an object that when you're done with it, you can stick it on a shelf and play with it next year. Yeah, it's an animal... Batteries are included, unfortunately. Batteries are included with it, and it doesn't turn off. Exactly. It never runs down. These aren't ever-ready animals out there. So, I mean, we stress this every year. Uh, it, it, might rule, it might ruin the, the element of surprise, you know, but we highly, highly recommend that if you're going to give a puppy to, to somebody, a friend, or maybe the child of a friend or a family member, Get with them. Make sure that they're, this animal is going to be taken care of each and every day. It's going to be spayed. It's going to be neutered. It's going to be vaccinated. You're able to take care of it. 
a lot of times we find that people get puppies and kittens for Christmas, and they live in an apartment or a rental house. And after Christmas, they bring them back, you know, say, hey, my friend got me a puppy for Christmas or a kitten for Christmas. I really, really love it, but here's the deal. I can't have it in my apartment unless I, sp- unless I spend, you know, like $5,000 to do for a puppy, mm-hmm. um, you know, insurance policy or what have you, a deposit, puppy deposit, an animal deposit. So make sure that family members and friends have the capabilities and the means to take care of these animals before you come and get them. We have got animals returned after Christmas with bows still around their necks. <laughs> so, I mean, seriously, we seriously have. Um, people, they, and it's the prime opportunity for people to get out there that have puppies and kittens and go to you know, Walmart, Kmart, things like that. And say, hey, free puppy for Christmas, and they'll decorate them and put little lights around the boxes. So that's going to entice people to, yeah, hey, a puppy, a kitten, a, a dog is free. I'm going to take it home. You know, they're not understanding things also. These puppies are going to go into an environment and not saying that everybody's not going to take care of it. You know, there's many, many people out there that's going to raise this animal and care for it until it, you know, until it gets old and it's gone. But there's also a lot of people out there that don't have a need for them and don't want them. And it's just a burden to them. It's, it, it, it just bedazzles me. Now, you made a comment that I... I I don't know why I get so annoyed when I see it because I'm I'm always thinking the what if scenario. Whenever, like you said, you go by Walmart or someplace and they have kittens, here, free kitten to good home, free puppy to good home. The first thing that always pops into my head is I hope somebody that's you know passing through does not have an underground dog fighting ring and they're not gonna pick up this dog and use it for dog fighting. That's Always a possibility. Worries. Exactly. And it scares me every time. I mean, do you ever have... Now, obviously, you work with animals, so you see this. You probably go through the same thing that I do. do does that ever pop into your head? It does. And in this, posi- in this profession, that's all we ask ourselves each and every day on a daily basis is what if. You know, what if? What if we go to a house and this happens? What if we talk to people and this happens? What if? What? There's a lot of that going on. Uh, and, and that's our way of thinking also. A lot of these people don't think twice about giving free dogs and free cats away. But what if they're used for the wrong purpose? Exactly. And we all, we all know this, that uh, we all know about the dog fighting issues and the disappearance of dogs and, and what puppies and dogs and small dogs can actually be used for. Mm-hmm. And that is a very big concern. Where is this dog going when somebody stops by and picks it up? Where is it going? And, and that's been the biggest thing. Now, I, I have mentioned it in a previous episode. Um, there was an incident that happened behind Kroger where there's a, a local person, we think he's local, we're not sure, um, going around. He has a dog. He took it behind uh, Kroger, filmed it, and let the dog attack all of the feral cats behind the actual Kroger. Right. Um, it is one of those big fears. What if, you know, where is this person? Are they passing through? You know, it's exactly. really hard things, and I, I imagine in law, in with you guys, you're in law enforcement. It must just plague you on a daily basis. You know, where can we find this guy? How do we actually send the proper authorities out there? How do we stop this? Because it's cruelty. It is. And, and you know, when when is it going to change from I'm going to let a dog attack another dog, or I'm going to let a dog fight with cats? When is that going to metabolize into I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do this now? Yeah, I mean that's 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 a situation that we are on top of. Actually, that's one of the cases that I'm working on. Um, I know the I, officer who is also working on it. We've been. I told him if I hear anything on my end, I'll go directly to him as well. Right, right, yes, and I've also been tasked with that case too. Um, like I said, we we have some we have some leads, but like I said, it's an open case. We can't really right. divulge a lot of that. But yes, not only are we involved animal control, but yes, the Rolla Police Department has been notified of this. There's been emails sent out. We have a lot of people out there that are are aggravated and upset at this this person and what they are what they are doing. We have some all organizations out there also that are kind of watching things. So I mean, you know, wherever, whoever, whenever, I mean, they they just have to understand that uh, 
you know, it, it may have been fine and dandy at some point in time, but now they're they're being watched. Right. And it's not so, on YouTube, which is odd, because the moment it came across my attention, somebody sent it to me, the first time it, it came across my my eyes, I looked on YouTube just out of curiosity, because these type of people, they have a tendency to want to gloat, put it on social media, which sure. is ridiculous. Unfortunately, it's not there, because, man, I'd love to be able to just say, here you go. Right, right, the yeah. Person, here's a picture, because they always like to put their own face on the camera and say, this is what my dog did. Exactly. And you know what the worst part is? Is because dogs that they use are typically the type of dogs that are of strong stature, like a bulldog. Um, um, you'll find the pit bull. You'll find just different kind of strong dogs that, that have good, strong gene to them, good jaws. They're not supposed to be this way. They're loving dogs. You beat the dogs, you abuse the dogs, you make them this this vicious animal, and then everybody goes, oh my gosh, it's a terrible animal. It's not the animal. It's that person. That's the problem. Exactly. Right. And you're exactly right there. It's not The animals are not born to be mean. They're not born to go out and, 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 and kill things and eat things. You know, it's how they're taught. Right. It's and, just like people. People aren't born to be bad. No, no, no. That's and that's the whole thing. That's where it all leads up. A kid and a and a dog when they're puppies and babies, or even as they're growing into being small kids, small dogs, they're still innocent. There's so much innocence in there. It's all taught. Every person that turns out to be one of them, any dog that turns out to be aggressive, it's. They were bred to be that way. Exactly. And you can't stress that enough to people. No, you can't. But no, unfortunately, you can't. it's it's a it's a stereotype that's out there. It's it's a cruel world. <laughs> Boy, is it ever? It is. But we are we are actively we are diligently working on this situation now, and and we hope to get it resolved as as fast as possible. And 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 that's a good thing too, because if if people out there observe something, you know, that's not right. We always encourage them to call animal control. I mean, as soon as you, it doesn't matter whether there's a dog left outside or there's a dog in a car, or you see somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing involving animals, definitely give us a call. And a lot of people have done that, and they say, well, we can't get a hold of you every time we call. Uh, the answer machine picks up. Well, just you just got to understand that we we are out there. The animal shelter, basically, we're here seven days a week cleaning and taking care of things. But our primary job, our primary focus, is the safety of the general public. And any time we get a call, we are mandated by the city of Rolla Police Department to respond to these animal related calls. And we can have one call a day, or we can have twenty calls a day, and we're not always here we have to be out there doing our job um when you do call when people do call we ask that you please leave a speak clearly uh speak slowly uh leave a valid phone number you know something that we can get back with you as soon as we can and we might be so busy it might not be today but it might be tomorrow Right. And yeah, if, there's we an will emergency, get back. if there is an emergency, you could always call the non-emergency number for the police department, and they can exactly. get a hold of you guys. And if you see something that's out of place, do not intervene. That's the biggest thing I always try to stress to people. Don't take it upon yourself to intervene. Right. Contact right. the authorities. If you're in a safe enough place, you can film it on your phone as long as you're not going to be in any jeopardy. The police department, the the animal shelter, you guys or, or police will be there. If you guys have video on it, it will be advantageous to them. So that's oh, always definitely. the biggest thing that we can stress. Just don't get involved. If you know of dog fighting, anybody suspects something, contact the proper authorities. Do not go barging in. Definitely. We can't stress that enough. I mean, we get into situations every day that are, that are pretty sticky and pretty hairy. Oh, I believe you know, and, and we have to have a actual backup from the police department. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. We can't stress that enough. If you see something, don't get involved. You need to call us. We'll get there just as soon as we can. And like I said, people, they, they call this number, and then they just hang up because they can't get a hold of us. Call the City Rolla Police Department, the non-emergency number, 
Uh, our area code, typically 573-308-1213. That is the non-emergency number of the City of Rolla Police Department. Let them know that you have a situation going on. Uh, it's an emergency. You need to get animal control out there. Soon you can. They will dispatch us. We all carry radios in our vehicles and everywhere. If you, They will dispatch us. We will get out there as quickly as possible. And I'm pretty sure, you know, if it's something that, that they need to send an officer to be at the, the site until you get there, they will send an officer. And it doesn't matter if it's in Rolla or anywhere in the country or world, for that matter. I'm pretty sure even in the, in other countries, because we're heard in a lot of different countries, same thing should apply there, too. It is interesting. Definitely, well, it is. It is. Is there anything else that you would like to mention? Now, I know you have a new addition at the Rolla Animal Shelter. Do you want to give us a little bit of insight? Well, actually, we have two new oh, additions at sorry. the animal shelter. I am um, still behind on my time. I am sorry. <laughs> man, it's, it's great. I mean, these guys are helping us out. Wonderful. We recently hired a new individual. Unfortunately for, for us, it's, he's only part-time, but he's here four days a week and does a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, he's, he's retired out of the United States Army. Oh, nice. Um, he is. He's working part time. He's uh, used to be a military police officer, so he's he fits right in. He does a great job at the shelter. Does a great job out there. His name is Officer Kevin McHugh. Right. Uh, if we you have guys a, see him. Give him a, a handshake. Say welcome to the Rolla Animal Shelter. If you guys uh, see him anywhere around Rolla, definitely. And our, he's our, a good man. Our second um, new in, inductee. Our second one is named Nick. He is actually a uh, Missouri S&T student, and every year they have what's called a, uh, a work student program where the students could go around to different businesses in the city of Rolla, whether it be a, maybe a, a fast food uh, facility, maybe uh, just wherever they're needing help. Uh, one of the areas that they can choose is the city of Rolla Animal Shelter, and we have this young man named Nick. Um, he is here... Uh, he's five, about five days a week. Sometimes when he has tests and stuff, but normally, normally it's five days a week. He works here from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. He answers the phone for us. He does all the adoptions. He does the impounds. Uh, he, he, he'll assist the customers, whatever is needed. So a lot of people that call will actually be speaking to Nick. And he's a wonderful, wonderful. They're both great guys. They both do us a, an excellent service. Well, that is great because the last time I talked to you, you were pretty much doing every day you were working. It was, it was really hard on you. So I'm glad that you got the help that you needed. Definitely, definitely. It was very difficult. You know, now we have we have these guys, and it will free us up to go out and actually answer calls and respond quicker to calls. Here, previously, when somebody calls, uh, we might be full of full of customers, and we have to tell them we'll get there as soon as we can. And it might be 10, 15, 20 minutes. It might be an hour later because we have a shelter full of people, and we have to call. If it's an emergency, we'll call the police officer and have them go out there. But now we're here, we've got these guys, and we can respond much, much quicker. That is amazing and awesome. I'm so happy to hear it. I really am. Well, um, is there any, any last things that you'd like to mention while we're still recording? Uh, keep your animals warm. That is... They get cold just like the rest of us. Uh, if anybody sees anything out of the ordinary, dogs out there, uh, no shelter, no food, no water, no that, give, definitely give us a call. We will jump on it and go out and take care of the situation. There you go. Well, I guess this concludes our winter edition with the Raw Animal Shelter. Um, I'm always sad to see our, our conversations end. Definitely, definitely. I wish we can go on for a long, lot more. Well, we could. We definitely could. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's always a pleasure. I will be down at some point. We'll do a video. Um, like, like you know, we are crazy busy. And oh, definitely. It seems like there's never enough time. That's right. We'll make time. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. As always, and I've said this before, thank you very much, John, for always coming on the show. Everything he said, it was... I, I'm sitting there talking to him and going, you know, this is probably the easiest interview you could possibly do because you talk to this person so often. And it makes it easier and easier and easier because you do it. Yeah, I was able to listen to it as I was grooming. Um, and the difference between straw and hay 
It just, I was like, whoa, I didn't know that. What got me was the, you know, the putting the light inside the actual dog houses and um, just different things. Now, I do want to actually mention this, um, to kind of tie into everything. We were um, looking online the other day, and actually one of our friends up in Canada, they had posted, if you guys have a feral cat population anywhere nearby, and, you know, obviously we're Midwest, you're in any kind of cold environment and you want to actually set something up to actually help house these cats. Obviously, you know, they're feral, so they're going to be outside. Um, you can just take one of those styrofoam coolers that you would use to go to the lake, to the beach. Um, put it on its, you know, upside down. Cut a hole so that the cat can go inside. Put it on the south end. The facing south. Facing south. And the cat actually has a home. It gets out of the element. It keeps everything kind of controlled inside, and it gives them a place to go. So if you want to actually set something up, you can get a couple of those, set them up, put a, probably a rock on top. Not, well, not, yeah, you want to make it. sure you want to weigh it down so the winds don't blow it over. Right. But yeah, you want to face it south, just like John said, um, when you're setting up your dog's kennel outside, I face it south so they get more of the warmth coming in. Um, don't put blankets in, because blankets can get wet and mildew. Yep. Um <clears throat> Always check to make sure your dog's water bowl isn't frozen over. Yep. Um, that, you know, the cooler for the cat, it, it's simple, it's cheap, it's easy. Yeah. And yeah. I think we might go down to it if we can find one. Yeah, it, probably, it might be hard to find. But, yeah, if you if you even have some left over from summer, I mean, this is the time when if you had some in your garage or something like that, um, just, you know, you're it's not like you're going to use it probably again. You're probably going to. Throw it away, destroy it. It'll probably get destroyed over the winter in your garage. Well, it's also, you know, recycle, reuse. <laughs> yeah, and it, it gives you an opportunity to have a few houses for feral cats to come in out of the cold. Styrofoam can be so bad for our environment, yes. especially if it's just left to rot, basically. Decompose. <laughs> well, it's and, not really decomposing, but well, it'll it, break it's up just and, crap. Yeah. You know, it gets it, it's horrible stuff, but at the same time, you can take that styrofoam cooler and make it have a purpose yeah and um cut that hole out face it south weigh it down so it doesn't blow off and if anybody has issues trying to figure out which direction is south there's one way i i would use and that is take your iphone look into compass and go into compass app and you'll be able to actually use your compass on your phone and that's how you can find south I mean that, that's how I that, that's the easiest way if you if you can't figure out any uh, other city way. boys <laughs> I am city folks I am city folks just don't understand um gosh I just want to sing the uh, that song, that commercial song now so that that's a little bit of information you know again John you you've, you pretty much are an encyclopedia of knowledge that's you know pretty awesome I definitely appreciate you taking the time and effort I know that. Uh, um, his life is so busy right now with what's going on. It, the shelter is actually, like he said, a lot more busy now than what they should be for this time of the year. And I kind of felt like that too ourselves is October typically slows down. Yeah. People are waiting till the last minute to get their dogs groomed before Thanksgiving. But we've been busy the entire time. Now again, and they have been crazy busy the have. Time. And again... Welcome to the two new additions to the Raw Animal Shelter. That is a great thing. As as John mentioned at the end, he introduced a couple of new people to everybody on the show who were going to be part who are part of the shelter. Um, so um, yeah, it was just it was awesome. Um, I was going to say something and I completely derailed myself. Um, <laughs> I do it ever so gracefully, don't I? It is kind of weird actually not to have a lot of audible noise in the background. It is so quiet. I, I think that's part of my problem. I'm, <laughs> I'm used to having cars and people and car alarms. Yeah, and trucks going by. This is just so <laughs> silent. Um, so anyways, um, I do want to actually mention something. It wasn't on the show notes. Um, actually, that is a good one. You know what? I do like that. Sarah has a great tidbit that I really want you to actually mention it. Go ahead. So I am really, really. I'm a really big fan of this uh, Facebook page, Groomers Rock. Yes. <clears throat> um, what's nice about it is that groomers can get together and, and you know complain about their job. Everybody complains something about their job. Not not very many people, 
can um, can say they have the absolute perfect job. There's no perfect job out there. So there's something that's going to bother you. You know, this is the same way. Uh, so you get together and they brainstorm or try to find out from other folks that have been doing it longer how ha- someone who has stumbled on products that help the dog for the XYZ problem. And it could be, you know, Quite a bit of fun, just complaining back and forth. Now, just, when you say Groomers Rock, you mean on Facebook? Yes, okay. the Facebook page that said Groomers Rock. Well, um, I've always wondered myself, the easiest way to wash a dog that has a cast on its leg. Uh, there was one dog that we had, um, actually my neighbor's dog, that came into my shop and he had a cast on his leg. And um, I had a heck of a time. Getting a bags wrapped around it. I vaguely remember this. Taping it. Oh man, it was a pain. Now, if only you knew this easy tidbit of what you could do. <laughs> but um, this one tidbit that I'll explain here in just a moment is for small dogs, like the the toy poodles. The uh, this won't, this so won't work it, on it a German might, Shepherd. No, <laughs> maybe maybe if you get the really big ones. Maybe I don't know. I don't it'll think fit so. Like a uh a, a, a Menger Pincher if they break their leg, a Jack Russell Terrier if they break a small dog if they break their leg and have to have a cast on. Okay. Um it is a contraceptive tool. So I'm going to pause a minute if you want to turn this off so your kids aren't hearing this. Yep, we'll give you a continue. couple seconds. You know, it will, we'll keep it clean, but we'll give you a couple seconds. If you don't want anybody in the room to hear this, or if you're at work, you can just turn down the down the volume. Yeah, because it can get a little awkward. Yes, so, it, it here will we get go. a little. One, two, three. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this uh, person named Terry, who posted on Dog Groomers Rock page, um, let's see, she actually had a dog come in that had cast on his leg. It looks to be a Shih Tzu. And she decided to go out somewhere. I don't know where she got this from. I don't know if she went out to work or to the store for it or had it in her car. She unraveled um, an extra large condom. There you go. <laughs> and she rolled the condom up onto the leg. Um, I would assume you probably don't want to have any kind of residue on it. Like some of them has... You know, flavors, you don't want anything like that. I would I would do one thing I would recommend that when you put when you unroll it, don't put it on the leg and start unrolling it with the leg because the nails will probably puncture. Well, it. what you need to no, the whole typically when a dog's foot's casted. Yes, I, I understand. So you do need to put it on. You don't you can't unroll it first. You can't unroll it first. No, you need to put it on and then roll it up. Oh, okay. okay. Um I stand corrected. <laughs> so, and the foot's in a total cast. So, okay. Um, I thought I saw a nail or two. No. See, no. I guess no. I didn't. So you roll it all the way up to past the, the cast. And if you want to add an extra level, level of protection around the top so the water doesn't drain into it, um, you can get like a string or something and, and tie it around. Um, Just be careful dogs. you don't cut off circulation. Well, that it's common sense, really. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to touch that one. <laughs> true, true, true. So, um, <clears throat> make sure that gets you know tied up. But it should be tight enough at the top that it would block the water from draining down into the cast and onto the cast. Um, I'll tell you one thing. The picture looks quite funny. It does look but... quite comical. Um, but, man, that, that is a... It is a really unique idea. I mean, it's it's functional and it will work. I was just surprised when you when you showed me the picture. I'm like, what? Yep. 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 That that works. It's much better better than wrapping uh, Walmart bags or and of or course with Kroger bags with around, any kind of guessed. just you know any kind of store, whether it's whatever market you go to, you always have to run that risk that there's going to be a hole in the bag because it seems like with Walmart, Kroger, Safeway. Vons, Ralphs, whatever you actually shop at, it seems like there's always that bag, that uh, every other bag that has a hole in it. So you got to be very careful. So thank you very much, Terry, for sharing that information with us. Um, like I said, these groomers have also shared information to help me 
progress in my grooming career too. Um, we never stop learning. There's always new things out there, better things out there, and more efficient ways to get things done. So it's quite nifty. I, I watch this all the time to make sure that we uh, we stay up on making sure your dog gets what they deserve. Very true. Well, and I also have a, a story I wanted to actually mention. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about it. Um, the first story came out, and it's from the News Nerd. I don't know how many of you guys know about this. So that's why you're going to probably see this more and more on Facebook. There's a story that's out. And it's, it's a claim that there's a restaurant in Los Angeles, California, that a Filipino group has successfully been able to petition the right to be able to sell dog meat. The full story is that this group said that it was a religious belief, and according to the news, group, the news nerd, that they were able to um, be granted three dogs per day to actually slaughter it had to be humanely um, and then the restaurant name was supposed to be Puchao de Manila now I've done some research on this it's not a true story uh, a lot of you guys are going to see it you're going to see it as a picture the picture is going to show what appears to be a bunch of dogs that have been hung and they've been skinned and there's a person kind of doing some kind of chopping. Now, the thing is, in my research of looking through a bunch of different stories, looking on YouTube, looking everywhere, the photos are actually cut and copied from other sources. None of what they said is true. If you actually go into Google Maps and you look up Puchao de Manila, you will notice there's no listing. If you Google it to try to find plate, uh, locations on the, on Google or anywhere else, it is not going to be found. So, don't worry. As far as we are aware, there is no such restaurant, no such petition. Now, it does it does raise the question. Growing up in Los Angeles, I can see where something like that could make sense. Um, there's definitely that. Yeah, it it could happen. You know. It probably will never. This is the discussion Sarah and I had. Before. Well, yeah, my, my biggest thing when I look at this is I can see California being okay with it because they always like to be on the, the edge side. They want, you know... If they would have said Santa Monica that, that Beach, pushes, Everything that pushes the boundaries. Every little thing that bothers one person, they want to do it. And I can go, you know, very political on this. I won't. But they love to push boundaries. There's not a limit that they're willing not to push. Uh, but true. at the same time, you look at California, they're very rights, you know, animal rights. So how anybody would be able to do this is beyond me. But again, I can see California being so to the one side. That they're like, yes, you know. Well, we have to. Happen. It's a religious belief. We have to do it, you know, and it does make a lot of sense. The story actually has believability to it. You know, it says that 11 regions around the globe still consume dog meat. You know, those being China, Indonesia, Korea, Mexico, Philippines, Polynesia, Taiwan, Vietnam, um, Antarctic, Antarctic, and Switzerland. Now, I don't know about Switzerland. That one was a little surprising to me. I was like, I don't know about that. Um, I can see um, I can see a couple places that are. I do know that there are parts in the Orient that have banned it. It is now banned uh, consumption to actually kill an animal, a dog, or a cat, actually, in that matter. Um, I have heard that there are some spots. Um, I can't see places like the UAE ever doing stuff like that. Um even well, they think is. dogs are, are are disgusting over there, and I don't think they'll consume something. Well, actually, in, in, in the disgusting. UAE, they don't really find dogs as disgusting. Um, they still have them as pets. It's cats more. I mean, the feral cat population in the United Emirates of America are, are just crazy. Sarah's seen pictures of I showed her. Um, oh, they're sickly. They're sickly. You don't you don't want to touch them. I mean, they, they carry all kinds of vile disease. Um, and they get rid of their, their feral cat population very inhumanely. 
Um, so it's it's one of those stories that I wanted to actually mention on the show because you're going to see it on Facebook. You're going to see this because the story came out on the 10th of November. If you haven't seen it yet, you're going to see it because it's going to go around and around and around. Um, and that's something that the Nerd News actually does. They actually make a lot of stories just for the wow factor. If you're trending it, and of course, you know, we're, we're talking about it. So it gets people talking. It's not a true story. And a lot of a lot of different sites have said everything that they say isn't true. I don't know about that. But I do want everybody to understand that this story was not true. Um, and if it is true, well, it sure did beat me. Because I don't see anything anywhere about it. And of course, you're going to find this type of restaurant. You're going to be able to find it if you put it into uh, uh, locations on your GPS. If it doesn't show up there, it probably doesn't exist. Right. And it's not going to be all of a sudden out of business or not to show on the map. Even if it was closed, it would still show the place. You know, when I had a discuss- discussion about this before, <clears throat> um, about dogs being used as, as a source of protein, um, I am against it completely. Uh, we have other big game that can be used for our consumption of protein, um, you know, the cows, deer, chicken, uh, livestock in general. Um, I'm not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan. I do eat meat and I do see the purpose of having animals out there for our, us. Uh, but when you look at something that's domesticated and that has been domesticated for years, 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 years forever. Decades. Yeah. <laughs> centuries. When I can look on the history books and see where the Akita has come from and how they treated the Akita in Japan. Uh, it's quite amazing. And just to see them breed the dogs just for food, and they do it just as inhumanely as what some um, uh, butchers, or not butchers, excuse me, slaughterhouses are. Um, you look online where the pigs were, were dealt with very inhumanely, the horrible things that they've gone through. The well, they still do. Like, you, yeah. As you know, I had a, an opportunity. I was going to take a job this year, actually, working for a company that makes sure that that stuff doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And uh, good thing you didn't. Yeah, I'm I, I'm really happy with where I am. I did not <laughs> like the idea of traveling again, traveling around, leaving my family behind. But going and seeing those horrific images. And filming it. So they do the same thing. They get these dogs, and they're all different types of dogs. They're, it's not bred one type of dog at one place for this particular reason. It's not. They just take anything from anywhere. And they put them in teeny tiny cages stacked up on top of each yeah. other. Yeah. So it's not like it's free range dog. It's not that. This is horrendous. And they are and, and they are actually you taken know, out. Of Obama the had went overseas and Obama has eight dogs. Yes. I'm sorry people well, it's rude not to eat their food. Well, you know, I don't care if it's rude to not eat their food. It's who you really are. Are you them? No. Well, I will. Go, I will go it? politically into this one, but it's it's it. No, it's it's the fact that to me it's wrong. It is wrong. I, I would never. And I will never dog. condone it. So I don't know why our leader of our country goes over and condones it. Well, you know, in some places when you go into some parts of the world. Um, and I, and I say scattered parts of the world. We're not talking about going to Europe. I'm talking about other parts that are more uh, ventured off the beaded path. You're going to find delicacies that are a little off. Um, I still, to this day, couldn't tell you what that meat on a stick was out in, <laughs> in Doha. I don't know what it was. I never ate it, but you know, I heard it was delicious. I don't want to know what it was. They said it was beef, but it didn't look like beef to me. Um, you'll find that in other parts, especially parts of the world that are not what you'd call vacation donate destinations. Um, you'll you'll see that that area change within the next five years, just like Dubai did. Well, it's just as it's it's out there. Oh yeah. As many people trying to push all of the people that are coming from other countries into ours, and try to push their beliefs, their cultures. So I can see where people would think this is real because there are I so did. many people that are pushing their their 
um, religious beliefs. Not just religious beliefs, but their culture in general. True. True. You know, we as Americans need to build our own culture together. And when you take something so f- to the one side, like eating dog, and forcing it to be okay, ah, uh, come on. It does seem but a law. At the same time, there's so many r- animal rights activists here in the U.S. I don't see where they allow this. I can see this happening. I, I really can see this happening, but for the most part, there is no, there isn't, in in my understanding, in all 50 states, there is no restaurant, no roach coach, no nothing that serves animal, you know, dog, cat, meat. Now, with that said, I could be wrong, so I'm just saying as far as I've ever been aware, right. there's nothing. Now, can I see it happening? Yeah, of course I can, um, but... This one, this story is not true. So if you do see it, you know, you've heard it from here. It's not true. As far as we know. As far as we know. And all my, and I, I worked on it for a few days, really researching this. Because I told Sarah, I'm like, what? You know, is this really possible? I mean, and it is out there. I mean, I've been asked, how do I find some of these stories? I don't even know how I find them. They just kind of find me. Yeah. So, with that said, that's that's that. It seems like this episode, the one episode I've been looking the most forward to, is coming to an end so quickly. But do we have anything else that we need to go over? I don't think we have anything else this week. I mean, I, again, you know, I'm kind of ready to start the next week because I've had such a good week last week. I'm just dying to get started on another one. So it's, well, just remember, folks, too, um, as we start getting colder, we need to start bringing our pets indoors, um, getting them out of their the elements outside the same goes with the heat when they're in the summer you got to make sure they have their shade and and fresh water to get to uh but the cold try to bring if you can't have them inside at all i know people are like no dogs inside nothing at all well try to get them to the garage yeah and, I mean, and there are a lot of people who have apartments we understand that now that's and that's something i just want to touch really quickly on um with uh one thing that John said, if you are thinking about getting in a dog or a cat for somebody as a Christmas gift, please discuss it with them first because they may have rules of their apartment, their house, something like that, that actually restrict them from having those animals. So please, if you are thinking about it, please talk to them because that's, that's so important. Because the worst case scenario is that you're going to have to put them outside and then they're not equipped to give them an adequate home outside to deal with all the the snow and such. Right. Um, check bedding in your dog's... Um, dog uh, house. In your the dog house, yeah. <laughs> Make sure that everything's dry and uh, change it out frequently. Check water bowls frequently. Uh, make sure that you take care of them and you don't forget of them. Yeah, that's, that's really the biggest thing, everybody. Um, yeah. Boy, I, I just I wanna go on for I still wanna go on. Is that really weird? I, I don't I don't wanna say goodbye today. Um I guess that's what happens when you have an interview. Alright, folks. Well, um I guess that ends this week's episode and thanks again, John, for being on the show. We always appreciate you coming on. Thank you everybody for listening and thank you everybody for continuing to lift me up and put me on your shoulders because if you guys didn't do it and keep me as energized to do the show. I don't know if I would actually have the energy to to do it each week. It's so much work. Well, it's it's been great having so many positive people in our life, and you know nobody can stay positive one hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And uh, it, it's great. You go to we go to our work, and there's positive. I go online. I go on Facebook, and there's positive. It is just one positive after another, and it's just it's one of those things. If you guys didn't do this, if you guys weren't as um, supportive as you are, it would be hard to do a show like this. Yeah, and we have quite a few listeners that aren't able to get to every show. Yeah. But they are in full supporter of us, you know, and we get the messages, hey guys, I'm sorry I haven't listened to you in a while, but um, things have been busy. I hope everything is good. You know, they check in with us. Yeah. It, it's great to know, and Definitely appreciative to everything and um, still getting numbers from different countries. It's yeah. not just stopped. Yeah, finding new countries that have just all of a sudden tuned in. You're like, hi. 
You know, welcome, welcome to listening to the show. I hope that you're enjoying yourself. I hope you enjoy our accents. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to actually end this show on a new note. We're going to actually end it with a song. Um, this song, actually, I just, this one just really hit me this week. Um, and we, we've got plans with other ideas with this. Um, but I guess that ends it for me. And um, Claire is actually taking a nap right now. So she she's really? not here to say hello and... Um, don't care what people say. We love to have our little girl with us and share this experience with her. She goes, Mommy, Daddy, are you recording a podcast? Yes, honey. Okay, can I say hi? Sure. You know what? We love you so much. We want you to have as much to do with this as, as we do. The show is for and her. Exactly. It's, it's not it's... for anybody else. And, you know, sorry if, if people don't like it, but, you know, our daughter is... The most amazing person to us in our world that nobody's negative nelliness matters when I look at her face. Yeah, and, and I started Everything this show melts. I started this show for her. Something that she will always have. It will last the test of time. I mean, this is something that will be here next year, next next century pretty much. It'll always be somewhere in a cloud somewhere. So whether you're listening to us in two thousand fourteen or two thousand fifty. Or What's whatever. kind of cool, too, is that this is entered into Ancestry.com, too. So if Claire ever wants to know more, yep. she can go into Ancestry.com and see and hear what we've done. What have you done? Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and you know what's great is that if you actually go online and you Google anything about, you know, raw animal shelter or different organizations that we've been part of, you look up a, under images and you're just going to see nothing but the Germer next door. Uh, it's just, it is awesome. You'll see. What do see, you see when you Google you? Yeah, right. Oh, oh. So, <laughs> anything else you want to end with? No, I'm looking forward to the next week. I'm looking forward yeah, to if the you guys and the, the hustle and bustle, the snowing outside now. Hopefully it melts by tomorrow. Yeah, it's actually supposed to be over with by the time this episode airs. It should be stopped, hopefully. Um, if so you guys everybody don't. Everybody stay safe out yep. there. Be safe if you don't live in snow areas. I really envy you. Um, if you have, if you do, you know, be careful on the roads. Um, if you don't have a grooming appointment by now, whether you live in Missouri or you live in California or where, you're Good probably luck. not going to get one. Um, I, Best bet is to try to get one closer to Christmas, so at least your dog's nice and cute for Christmas. That is true. Um, I do want to raise you up on one thing. Um, we have raised $100 oh, that's right. for Pecal. They were issued a check this past Thursday. I was going to talk about the call, and then we got off subject. Anyway, um, we finally, like Krista, we got to the $100 mark. Um, thank you so much to our customers who have donated the money. A um, bunch of really cute photos. Took it to the Pecal meeting um, that I was late to, and listened to what they had to say, and they're really going to focus a lot on spay and neutering. Um, they're going to focus a lot on the shelter and getting messages out there to the world. Um, then I handed the check over. Everybody loved it and enjoyed it. They kind of uh, erupted in applause. Like, I gave them $1,000 when it's just 100 I'm like, I'm sorry it's not more. I wanted to give you more. But, you know, that at $100, you just cut it there. Um, and all of our customers did that. Some of them gave more than just the $5 for the photo. They actually gave more because they wanted to help out more. And then some people did it more than once. Thank you so much for that. And um, I, I'm just really happy that we we're able to help. And we're going to continue helping. And um, our customers seem to love it. And they don't mind doing that. So, and that is cool. true. And then tomorrow, or if you're listening to it today, on the 17th, which is Monday. Yes. Um, if you actually go to Pizza Inn right here in Rolla, if you're in the area and you're going to be in Rolla, you know, come on down to Pizza Inn. What will happen is there's going to be, um, um, there's going to be actual, I, I don't exactly know the percentage, but a proceed of sales tomorrow goes to Pecal. So I, you know, what if you, you just need, you know, a nice meal out, great restaurant going to Pizza Inn, you can help out Pecal by showing up. I'm trying, as we're, we're doing this, I'm scrolling down my thing because there was something else I wanted to talk about really quickly. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to try to bring Claire and have, like, you know, a daughter-mother dinner out kind of thing. And 
um, try to take Claire out with me to the Pizza Inn, depending on how late we get out of work. It seems like it's 6 o'clock each day for the past week. It does. Um, you know, as always, we send our, our support and prayer out to Glenda's mom. Uh, she's been you know, ill for a little bit, um, so she won't be able to make it to tomorrow's Pizza Inn, but uh, we definitely send out all of our support to your mom. And I'm just trying to find the last thing, and it's just not showing up, and it's driving me nuts. Um, it was going to be um, at Emo's for Sarah Nora and her family. I don't have it in front of me, and I do feel bad. Um, I'll try to find something to maybe post it in the show we'll, notes. We'll get it later. Or um, I think it's this least. week, and I'm, I'm just drawing a blank. I'm sorry, guys. I was looking everywhere for it, and I couldn't find it. All right, everybody. Um, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. And I'm Sarah Green. Make sure everybody realizes life is so short. Play with a pet. Peace out. You can't bring me down. Already had my life turned upside down. I'm right at down with spiral.